Welcome to Book World with Karen Rayborn. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen Rayborn. In case you're new here, kindly subscribe to my channel. And for the returning subscribers, thank you so much for always having my back. So today I want to analyze a book that is Floods by John Ruganda. Okay, Floods, John Ruganda is from Uganda and Floods is written capturing part of the history of Uganda and as you're going to read through or listen through this video you're going to get uh, understanding of the same and you're going to learn something from it first of all to begin floods just giving it a play giving a storyline on how it begins until it ends the storyline of this flood this is the storyline first of all we are introduced to the characters and this is a this is a book written to to talk about the government, to talk about the state and how the state used to media to manipulate people and also to cause people some harm. So in the first place, when the flood, the story ha happens in the scene one, we find that Headman is uh, standing by the, the shore of the lake, uh, welcoming people into the boat. The news or the radio has announced that people are going to die because of the floods and the government or the state has come up with a with a rescue plan which is the boat to rescue people people are believing and uh, for instance we have headman headman is the character that is uh, inviting people into the boat headman is doing everything to make people believe uh, and they can enter the boat headman comes with together with the belongings and enters the boat and after headman entering the boat Everyone now wants to enter, but we find some stubborn people who don't want to uh, enter the boat. The ancient plan of the boss to use uh, to involve people into the boat was to ensure that he finishes Nankia together with the mother. But Nankia doesn't happen to enter this boat, but different people does. And uh, people who gets into the boat, we have uh, the fisherman. And after uh, Yeyun seeing the fisherman, Yeyun speaks about this man and says that even me i used to be a fisherman i used to be on the lake with the boat fishing and until some point i met someone uh, whose genitals were mutilated and stuck inside of the mouth you can imagine the atrocities and massacres that were happening during that time that people could just someone could just be killed and to make it worse the genitals mutilated and stuck inside the mouth so when you speaks about this man um, Headman is now not happy about whatever Yeyun is saying. And Headman is here to represent the state and to get people into the boat. Announcing to people 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 2 minutes, the boat should be leaving now. And Headman, uh, the government has placed Headman in this place so that he can manipulate people. That this is a leader, this is one of our officials who is also entering the boat. What, what if we try? Maybe this is a rescue plan, but he refuses to enter the boat and brings up stories and until he leaves that place. Goes to a room, meets Nankia together with Bogo, talking about sensitive issues, uh, which Bogo called uh, insults, which are the truth that were happening in the nation of Uganda. These were things that were happening and the atrocities, the massacres that were committed. And because uh, he didn't want these things to be sorry to be spoken about he decides that he's going to kill to shoot uh, to shoot Yeyun because Yeyun has gotten to hear something shoots Yeyun but uh, uh, to make it fortunately Yeyun doesn't die that is when we find the conversation continue and the play play continues okay another thing that I would want to talk about um, uh, Nankia is one of these uh, professors Yeyun comes in and announces about the boat sinking and uh, after announcing this, Bogo is so surprised and uh, even though he knows that the master plan came from him and is the cause of all this, he decides to cover up everything and doesn't accept or, or rather he, think in, he behaves in a way that people will think that he's so, so surprised even though he knew about everything that was going to take place. Then another thing that we get to find, Nankia is the professor is a professor some a woman who is so learned but get gets into entanglement with uh, Bogo of a situationship or rather the relationship issue 
together with this man who is the chairman of the building board. That is the identity that we get to find at the beginning of the book about this man called Buogo. And that is what also Nankia knows about the same. So after this, uh, after this period of time of argument, speaking about highlighting the massacres and atrocities that were committed by this boss of Buogo, um, Buogo is not uh, so happy about them and decides to slap Nankia. When Nankia spoke about a man who was killed by the state, but it was the media, they used media or rather radio to lie to people that this man was a criminal, this man was not killed, this man was just arrested because he was the, a criminal and later died, which was not the truth because the government is fond of hiding everything that was happening and everything that happened in the state to cover up for their names, even though they were after the master plan of everything. So after this point, we get to see that Nankia reveals everything. And because of this, this is the reason as to why Bogo wanted Nankia together with the mother to be killed. Number two, Nankia is also pregnant. Uh, and uh, having this baby, the, father, the baby daddy is Bogo. Bogo doesn't want to accept and take responsibility because this is someone from a poor background and Bogo is someone who is uh, the chairman of the board, uh, building board, someone who is so renowned, someone who is prominent, doesn't want to accept them, this and that, accept the child. He even mm, manipulates Nankia into signing a check and uh, gives Nankia a check and says that you can write any amount that you want but I, I, and I will, I'm going to give it to you. Nankia refuses to write and says that she's going to abort the child, which doesn't, which uh, she said it jokingly, she didn't even mean it, but Bogo decides to even blackmail her and say that if you're going to uh, abort the child, then it means that I am going to announce, use the media to announce to people about your mother who goes to church, a staunch Catholic who goes to church but doesn't follow what the word says, just a hypocrite. Nankia is now, they come to a point after the argument and even the slaps that uh, took place between them because of the, too much insult from Nankia or too much truth, the pill that was bitter that Bogo could not take in. They decide now to speak about how they met, how they used to be. And speaking about how they met, they, they give us a flashback and tell us how, as, uh, they go back to the way, the, the place that they met, the restaurant that they sat and we are given a different story about these two people and their love life. And because of this, uh, they reunite and forgiveness is now accepted, or rather it's done. Then we get to, to the end of the book. I want it to be so brief. And when you get to the end of the book, we find that uh, this story, this story about atrocities and pregnancies, they are now ended after wedding bells, these people reunite, argument is now solved everything is solved they now reunite and ev even they get to a point of having a toast and uh, embraces and says that that the two are so inseparable like no one inseparable separable sorry that no one is going to separate them at any cost and they give it a toast after that now the first and second soldiers enters into the place that they were into the stage that is we are in a second scene that is when we find those people entering and they're inside there, they're looking for someone who is called boss. They want to arrest boss because the atrocities and everything that was committed is now out and they're now aware. The state is now, or rather the people are now coming out and seeking for justice. And during this time, Nankia decides to, um, to speak for for Bogo, when the boss, when they ask about who is the boss, are you the boss? And Nankia says that this is not the boss, this is the chairman of the building board, which was not so. And when these people now decide that to be harsh on the boss, now they say that it uh, is the one, he, has, he accepts that he's the one, he's the boss. So the true identity of uh, Bogo is now realized. We get to see that truly Bogo was the boss whom we've been imagining throughout the book. We didn't know that who this man was, who is so ill-mannered, who is doing atrocities and massacre, committing every everything that is, uh, that is painful or bad to people, to the state. So we get to realize it was this man called Bogo, 
covering up everything in the, in, with a different identity, which was not the name, was the Moses. So, uh, again, we get to see that in the book, we find forgiveness. Nankia, together with Bogo, they reach to a point there is forgiveness. So the book now ends or begins to fall when there's forgiveness. Justice is now solved, solved, uh, served, I mean. That is, we get to the resolution of the book. Justice is served finally. And Nankia, Nankia gets the forgiveness. Bogo is arrested for the atrocities and everything that he did to the people. So this book, when you read it, you get to learn the lessons. You get to learn, first of all, how the government could do anything but cover it up so that no one could notice that whatever they were doing was really wrong. They cover everything up in the name of... Um, in the name of boss or giving themselves some pseudonyms so that no one could identify them like for the case of Bwogo calling himself Bwogo the chairman of building board yet he was the boss of the CRB SRB so it's a different thing and we find this this is so common with the leadership and you get it when you read through the book you get to learn things and, and begin to look at people or uh, rather leader, leaders or anything that any politician that you want to view you get to look at them from a different angle when you read this book because these people pretend they pretend they, they are among you they pretend so much but when they're alone they know what they're doing and they usually do a different thing so this book is so nice it was so captivating i could not put it down when i picked it I read it through through it through the, uh, until the end and i'm sure you're going to enjoy this it's a flood by john ruganda I assure you that you can never get tired of this book and any writing by John Ruganda they are usually so nice so short a um, uh, few pages just a few pages and so enjoyable thank you so much for listening to the end um, may the Lord bless you so much and um, till we meet next time thank you